Hey guys, Gerard Vashon here, and today we're gonna to be going over JST's new plugin, Howard Benson Vocals. So as some of you guys know, I actually already got my hands on the plugin, and I've been messing around with it for a little bit. Lauren and I actually did a little video to help announce it. I'll link the video in the description below. This plugin literally has everything you need. It's got compression, saturation, EQ, widener, multiplier, reverb, delay, you name it, it's all built into this plugin. And in all honesty, guys, it is probably one of my favorite vocal plugins that's ever come out. I'm really stoked to be going over this with you guys. Guys. I've seen a lot of other YouTubers going over this and I kind of want to go a little bit different of a route. Instead of doing something a little bit more singy, which is something you guys normally know that I do, I'm actually going to go um, straight gutturals on this one. I haven't seen it really be used in a deathcore sense, so I have this kind of deathcore-esque song that I've been working on and that's what we're going to be showing you today. A lot of low gutturals, just a lot of heavy, aggressive, distorted vocals. So let's get going. <laughs> Awesome, now that you've heard the track, let's go through and look at the plugin. So as you can see here, we've got seven different modules. Vocals, which is going to be your compression and saturation, EQ, multiplier, width for stereo widening, echo, which is your delay, space, which is reverb, and then your output, which also has a limiter on it. What I love most about this plugin is that on both the vocal and the output modules, you can actually see that they've got the sweet spot marked out. So it's very easy to find out how to best optimize this plugin. So real quick, before we go into anything, I want you guys to hear what the vocals sounded like soloed without any effects on them. So let's go ahead and listen to that. Fair crowing, there's no coming back from this. As you can see, nothing too special there, but let's turn on the plugin and go through and see how everything sounds with that on. Fair crowing, there's no coming back from this. As you can see, that's dramatically different. We're getting way more aggression. It's way more consistent. It's just a really cool sound to it. So let's go through and go over some of the modules. Like I said, as you can see, uh, it's constantly hitting the yellow, which is going to be your sweet spot. So that's where I set the input to. And I did the shift double click to calibrate and just played the audio through it and it did the rest for me. I compressed this as hard as I could because I wanted as much aggression out of it as possible. And then I did add some grit to it, but let's go through, play the vocal, and I'll mess with both the grit and show you what the tube warm sounds like as well. Killer. That did exactly what I wanted it to. Now let's listen to the tube warmth as well. I'm gonna A-B that. As you can see, it really beefs up the lower mids and kind of gives it the whole vocal a little bit put more of a push. Definitely warms it up quite a bit. For this, I wanted a little bit more grit though, so let's stick with that. And on the EQ, I kept things pretty simple. I did a 4 dB shelf at 8K. I did a little bit of a wider boost at 2K at about 3.5 dB. And then I did a bell for the low end. It, I use a dynamic mic, and I like to get really up close when I do gutturals. So I got a little bit of proximity effect, so I wanted to duck some of that out. So I put it on bell mode instead of a shelf and cut a little bit at uh, 320 and I did that at about 3 dB, and then I used the high-pass filter as well. And I didn't use the lo-fi, but let's go ahead and listen to what that sounds like as well. Fair crowing, there's no coming back from this! I swear back! I actually really like the lo-fi sound on that. So I'm not going to go too much into the multiplier on this. I said it a little bit. Your offset's going to be how much it changes the pitch and the amount's just how much you're mixing it in. Um, I use that in a really interesting way. As you can see here, I've actually got a fake double, and I'll go more in depth on how I use it for that. 
I didn't use the width at all, width at all on my main vocals, but I did use the echo and uh, the space knob. So I'm gonna go ahead and move those around so you guys can hear it. Eric, there's a live face. Of life. And as you can see, you can get really long tails out of it. I like to keep things a little bit less, a uh, lighter though. This song doesn't need too much ambience, but I wanted something to just make it sit a little bit better. And let's listen to the space knob as well. Get silent! So you can get some really dramatic differences out of this. You can really crank the size up real hard. I personally don't like to for this particular song, but you, it's really cool. And I actually might act, see myself using that on some textured guitars and stuff on the future. It's really sick. I myself didn't use the limiter. I don't really like to limit my vocals, but it is definitely a really handy tool for people who are into that. And you can even set the limiter to be before your spatial effects. So that's kind of cool as well. Now, the one thing I really wanted to kind of show you was we have this fake double here. And let me just solo just that in particular. And then I'll go more into the multiplier and width knobs. So with those off, this is what those uh, fake doubles sound like. There's no coming back from this! Which, it's cool. But I, as you can see, actually originally tracked three different takes because I wanted to do one in the center and two a little bit lower on the sides to make it seem like it's just growing and getting monstrous but instead I decided to just use one of those takes and I just really hit it hard with both the multiplier and the width knobs so let's go ahead and listen to what that sounds like before and after there's no coming back from this and with it there's no coming back from this and now with that main vocal as well, too. There's no coming back from this! And as you can see, it really just makes it spread out and just gets so much bigger. So I'll mess around with a couple of these knobs just so you guys can get a better idea of what's going on with it. I'll start with just the multiplier here. There's a live face of life. There's a live face of As you can see, you can get some pretty substantial differences with that. But where I really enjoyed this for this is the width. So it makes it sound as if I took essentially two vocal takes and pan them left and right. So let's listen to that. There's a live face of you can really change how far you really want to push them out. I didn't want to push them out too, too far. I just wanted it to seem like the whole vocal was kind of jumping out a little bit. Now let's see what it goes like from zero to cranked. I feel you drowning! I feel you drowning! I feel you drowning! I feel you drowning! And as you can see, I backed off on the gain knob over here a little bit as well, too, just so I can kind of stay in that sweet spot. And I think since I moved the knobs around, it might be a little higher. So. From this. Nope. It seems like I got things roughly in the same spot. So let's go through one more time just to hear everything in context. Awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed the plugin. I'm actually going to leave a link in the description down below so you guys can go pre order it. I highly recommend it. Like I said, it's one of my favorite plugins to ever come out. And I definitely see me using it in a lot of my work in the future, not only my covers, but also some of my clients as well, too. So go check it out. I can't wait to hear what you guys do with it.